Uh, okay, so I got a seat blank here. Now this is uh, Eastern White Pine. It's one of my preferred uh, pieces of wood to carve seat out of. It's soft, easy to carve, plenty strong for the seat because it's so thick. Uh, doesn't add extra weight to the chair. I like my chairs to be as light as, as possible. Uh, I mean, you can use any wood you want for the seat that's strong enough, which is most any wood, if you're willing to carve it. Most of the woods get harder from here, and they get tough tough to carve uh, by, by hand, but you can do it. Uh, you can do it. You know, M's been made for a whole, used for a whole lot of chairs, and it's pretty hard stuff. Uh, but uh, for your first chairs, you might want to look at pine. Tulip poplar is, uh, uh, is, is not bad if you get the green heart, uh, air dried green heart. You get the kiln dried white sapwood and I'd, I'd stay away from it. It's pr pretty hard. Uh, if you got access to butternut, that's beautiful stuff. Catalpa is, is, is great. Uh, Cypress maybe. Um, there's and, and there's probably a whole lot and, and, and like I said earlier you may live someplace where there's trees I don't even know about that uh, that some woods might might work. So this is a just a blank of, of eastern white pine and uh, the first thing I have to do is is surface it uh, and I'm going to do that <clears throat> just with one plane. So typically I'll run through at least three planes when I'm flattening a seat and they'll go from rougher to finer. But what I've done is I've taken this uh, number five jack and a uh, few reasons I've chosen this. It, it is the most common plane found at least in the, in the U.S. in uh, flea markets and junk stores because it was the carpenter's plane. It was a jack plane it could do, they used it for, for everything, could do all kinds of stuff. So these things still are, are pretty reasonable and I've slightly cambered the blade to be able to cut fast but still for the finish cut give me something that's that's not too scalloped. Um, so uh, that's what I've done. Opened up the mouth here uh, a little bit right here because I'm going to be taking some pretty big pretty big cuts with, with this thing. Uh, so uh, I'll start out oh <coughs> um, yeah, so here I am using my, my, my workbench. I was going to use my little one for all this stuff and show you how to do it just with it. But, whatever, I've already kind of uh, introduced more tools than what I said I was going to do. So we'll just go ahead and, and use this. Uh, <clears throat> if you're on the little bench, like what I use over there, uh, I say over there, it's behind the camera, that's what I said over there. But... Uh, it's got, it's got dog holes in it, and the way that I use that is you just drop pegs into those dog holes, and you drive wedges between the pegs and the board, and that holds it just as solid as these nice dogs right right here. So, sorry about that. I was going to do it over there, and I was just, I get in these uh, uh, just zones, and I do it the way I've done it for 35 years. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to cut cross grain either straight across grain or diagonally because the wood doesn't have any strength or doesn't have any strength has less strength than it does this way so you can take you can take bigger bigger cuts and uh, so I'll see what uh, how this plane is set It had just a tad little crown to it there. Take that out. Take that little crown out first. And let's grab a straight edge here and see see what I'm looking like. Yeah, still a little bit more.
Okay. Now, I'm going to run it this way. Where's my pencil? I had a pencil a minute ago. So, uh, from here, it planes that way, and from here, it planes that way. Well, this is, I'm not going to pay a lot of attention with some tear out, so I'm just going to go ahead and go at it right here. I think I'll leave that at the bottom. It's got uh, some surface checks on it right here. And you find those surface checks on the uh, uh, bark side right around the center of the board. They're drying checks is what they are. And uh, they're not a problem if they aren't too deep. And those aren't. Um, let's see here. So I want to plane this down to an inch and three quarters and I want to be a little bit more accurate than I was on the shaving horse. So as you can see, using my rule. start into this one I need to get me a drink of water. Well I've got uh, a good quarter inch to take off of this right here so obviously we're not going to force you all to sit there and watch me take this whole quarter inch off but I'll get started with it and then I guess we'll come back to the finished part and move on from there. So same thing cross grain you can take deep cuts and then I'll turn and go with the long wood fibers to get a little smoother and probably back off on the depth of this a bit and see if I can get a, um, a smooth cut just back on the spindle deck is all I, all I need uh, or smooth enough for the chair. Mm -hmm. If you notice, I either pick the plane up so I don't drag it back on that blade, or I kind of, you might not even see what I do, I kind of tilt it to where the blade doesn't get dragged back. I guess that's supposed to dull the blade, and while I don't know that for sure, I just have developed that habit.
just about to the line. on this thing a little bit. Now it's changed and going back that way there, so Okay, we got a seat blank, ready to start uh, drilling some holes.